Morgan into right center. But Justice there, and there are two away. You know, Tony, so much has been made about this Atlanta pitching staff, and rightfully so. Some believe it might be the best in big league history, at least the best since the Baltimore Orioles in 1971 when they had 420 game winners. But you look at some of the names here, the Cy Young winners on this team and other clubs in years past. But I tell you, last season, Charlie Liebrand had the best win-loss record in terms of just overall starts, whether his team won the game or lost the game. 22-9 and nine the Braves were in Liebrand's start. Well, certainly when you look at the Cy Young Awards that this pitching staff has garnered, along with some of the other very good staffs in baseball history, you'd have to say, Tom, that the potential is there for this to be one of the best. Again, down the right field line, but foul. But, but bear in mind something, Tommy. <laughs> Who is that guy for the Baltimore Orioles on the far right? Well, now, that was the 1980 Baltimore Orioles. 81, I guess you could consider it. And uh, those were the good old days. And there he is 35 years later. I was 12 years old then when I won the Cy Young Award, <laughs> one of the youngest in history to win it. But I was going to say that you're looking at the finished product when you look at those other staffs. This staff, as a staff now, has got to do it for a few years before you even consider the greatness that might happen. And strange things happen along the way. This will be a hit. Wilson runs far too well for Blauser to have any chance after Pendleton couldn't get it. The last time up, Willie Wilson hit one down the line, and this time he got it by Terry Pendleton. And when you do that, you're not going to get Willie Wilson. Watch it again as the inside outs the ball and just slaps it to the left side. After that, for Wilson, it's easy, and that's why he's so valuable at the top. And that's why if his legs are healthy and he feels strong, he is going to be at the top of this batting order as the table setter. And that's a big improvement over what they were able to do last year, which was close to nothing as far as on-base percentage from the number one man. Keep an eye on Wilson over at first, and there's a nice play by Pendleton. He gets a force, and that's the inning. Pendleton, a gold glove winner, and he shows you his stuff right there. A hit a man left. We go to the six. Still 1-0 Maddox and Atlanta. Are they high? Yeah. Maybe lows. Heavy rains. Lake effect snow. Tom will tell you. Weather made me what I am today. A weatherman. Should you chill? Are you hot? We're a bundle. Not a lot. Yeah. Tom will tell you. A lot of people talk about Chicago's weather, but I do something about it. Will it blow? Fair and fine? <laughs> Wanna know? <laughs> Turn to nine. Tom will tell you. Yeah. But only on Chicago's very own. That's right. The laboratories of 2001 announce a major breakthrough in auto protectant technology. Formula 2001 Super Protectant. Its advanced sunstop formula helps protect against damage caused by the sun's UV rays, like fading, drying, and cracking. What's more, independent lab tests prove Formula 2001 shines better and protects longer than Armorall on vinyl and leather. But what if your car's surfaces are already faded? We went to the Arizona desert to see if Formula 2001 Super Protectant could help restore the appearance of these UV-faded vehicles. Watch what happens to UV-faded vinyl, rubber, even dried faded leather. Get the best protectant under the sun, the one that shines better and protects longer than Armorall. Formula 2001 Super Protectant with a fresh leather fragrance. And for the unique demands of tire care, get new Formula 2001 Tire Foam and Shine. Just spray and walk away. Get 2001 at these fine stores. In the tradition of Hoosiers and Brian Song, final shot, the Hank Gathers story. Tonight at 11.30 on Channel 9. The National League champions at Wrigley Field. The Cubs versus the Braves. Tuesday afternoon at 1 on Channel 9. Really not a bad looking day here in Chicago. A little on the chilly side at 43 and the winds as you see blowing in off Lake Michigan about 14 miles an hour. But I tell you it's been a lot worse for openers here in the Windy City. I think it's a pretty good day to pitch time because hitters don't like to swing the bat with the wind blowing in and these cool temperatures. And if you throw a few fastballs in on the hands they might remember it an inning or two later. Pendleton has reached base twice. He's walked singled and now lifts one into left. Maldonado playing the wind and has it. One up, one down. 
We'll take a look at Terry Pendleton ending the inning. He dives to the line and then pivots on that right knee and throws a strike to Lemke at second base. So the defense behind Maddox is very good for the Atlanta Braves, as you would expect. And Greg Maddox, who very rarely gets himself in trouble via the base on balls, is going to make the Cubs have to hit him to beat him today. Bear in mind, this Atlanta staff last season without Greg Maddox tossed a major league high 24 shutouts. Six of those were against the Cubs in the 12 times they met, 10 of which Atlanta came away with wins. You'd have to figure that both of these pitchers would be in line for a pretty good game today. Morgan 9-2 and two in this ballpark last year, and Greg Maddox 12-4 and four in the friendly confines. So both of them very comfortable pitching in Wrigley Field, and both of them putting together a good effort this afternoon. A little bit outside on the Morgan fastball, 2-1 to Justice, who has knocked in the game's only run. A two-out single to left center. And there you see the all-time ERA by Morgan. That is almost unbelievable at 135. We have got 11 cameras out at the ballpark today, which means that Arnie Harris might be blind this evening at home after the game. He's got a lot to deal with as you look at Mark Lemke. 3-1 to Justin. And he draws a one-out walk. That is the third of the game issued by Morgan. Well, Arnie might go blind, but I tell you one thing, he'll do it being very warm and comfortable. In the climate-controlled WGN television truck. While we're up here <laughs> battling the elements, as it were. Well, I guess it's just part of the gig. What you have to watch here is the hit and run, Tom, because this is a situation that cries out for two. And Bobby Cox might send them running. Justice does not have particularly good speed. Bream does not have particularly good speed. But surprisingly, Bream does not hit into a lot of double plays because he is a good contact man and because they run in situations like this. Ball one to Bream, who had an infield hit in the fourth inning. He's also bounced out to second base. Can only wonder what goes through the mind of Greg Maddox. Not necessarily so much right now, but coming into this game. A place where he had so many great seasons. There goes a runner, swing and a miss. There's a throw on the money. Well, there was the hit and run. But Rick Wilkins shows that he is going to be one of the better throwers in all of baseball. This is a perfect throw. Bream cannot protect Justice. And Justice... Taking a long time to run into the tag of Sam Chez. And from the camera on the roof, Justice looking back, and right then you go, oh no, I'm out by plenty. Is that from your roof down the street here, Waze? That's from the roof of the library that Arnie Harris and I will not <laughs> have an opportunity to visit much because we just don't have the days off this year. There's our rooftop camera. Got every angle covered for you, and we'll be here all season long, Cubs baseball, and we invite you to join us. Well, you get enough days off. You get about nine or ten. Bream strikes out. Wilkins puts a tag on him, and that's the inning. Morgan has only allowed four hits in the game, yet his team has only collected four, and they trail the Braves one nothing. A participating advertiser in Cubs baseball is Crystal Pepsi. You've never seen a taste like this. You're tuning into the action. You can't believe your eyes. They got three-point shots, alley-oop down the lane, not to mention a man who flies. Just like a roller coaster, you know you gotta ride again. The Bulls are on TV tonight, so you tune in to GM to see them play. They hit with blow, you will wait to see them play. They're unbelievable. My brother, about to become a father. So how big can a crib be? Season tickets went on sale today, Mike. Yeah. Well, maybe next year. We got five years straight. Yeah. Is this is about the kid. The kids get in for free, you know. He's gonna be a little tight. Mike, this year's on me. Only one beer has the taste of 
genuine as the people who drink it. Budweiser. Now, the new little guy's going to every game, right? Bobby, he could be a girl. A girl? The in-your-face fadeaway. Arc times velocity equals a three-point shot. Translation, Electric Avenue beats the short off for Best Buy. Scotty, just look at the Electric Avenue all-star lineup. Sony, Panasonic, RCA, Apple, Maytag, GE. Plus, Electric Avenue will match any store's advertised price guaranteed. Teeny little guys, weren't they? It's an air show spectacular when Michael and Dominique take to the sky. Friday at 6.30 on Channel 9. Back with Steve Stone, I'm Tom Brenneman at Wrigley Field, opening day 1993. Greg Maddox has returned to his former hometown and blanked his former team on just four hits. Mike Morgan pitching a wonderful game as well. He's only given up a run on four hits, but that's what he trails by. 2-0 to Grace, who struggled all spring long, and he's 0-2 today. Cub fans join the Cubs April 6th and 7th as they continue the series against the Braves. For tickets, stop by Wrigley Field's box office, any Ticketmaster outlet, or charge by phone at 312-831-CUBS. Count even now at 2-2. Two and two. Remind you, later tonight on Channel 9, it's a tragic true story of one of the nation's brightest young basketball stars. Victor Love stars in Final Shot, the Hank Gather story. Tonight at 11.30 on Chicago's very own Channel 9. Boy, I had a chance to see that young man play three or four times in person. He was something. Three and two to Grace. The outfield plays him to go the other way. There's ball four, so the inning has started. On a walk to Grace, it's the second issued in the game by Maddox. Good start here to the sixth inning as the Cubs now have a chance with a leadoff man on. And that's the first time in this ballgame against Greg Maddox that they've had the leadoff man on base. Well, now with the hole on the right side here, do you think about a hit and run with Maldonado and Grace over at first, who runs decently? I would let him take a swing or two and then try it. There goes the runner, swing and a foul ball. He decided to try it on the first pitch. The reason I don't usually like it on the first pitch, Tom, is that all the advanced scouts have watched spring training. They all read the papers, and they know that Jim Lefevre has said that his team is going to be a lot more aggressive. And so I would think that a pitch out on the first pitch would have been a good play by Bobby Cox. Now this is before the game. Mark Grace being awarded the Rawlings Gold Glove, and he is very proud of that. And deserving of it. Runner does not go this time, and Maldonado again fouls it away. You see the Cubs are wearing the names on the back for the first time. And why not? Because the Cubs have 11 new faces from a year ago. Obviously, Maldonado won. Willie Wilson, Eric Yelding, Tommy Shields, Steve Lake, Matt Wahlbeck, then the pitchers, Batista Guzman, Hibbert Myers, and Plezak. They even have a new coach. And in the bullpen, Tony Muser. One and two to Maldonado. A lot of new faces in that Cub bullpen. And four left-handers to contend with the National League. Well, Tom, the Cubs might get a break here because Maddox tried to go up and in with that 0-2 pitch. If he throws a breaking ball away, it might wind up in the dirt. Could be a wild pitch or pass ball. Barry Hill looking over in the dugout to see if Bobby Cox wants a pitch out here. Well, Maddox will throw to first. Grace is drawn. A walk to open the sixth inning. Let's see if Barry Hill glances in again at his manager. Yep. He tried it outside and missed. Two and two. I'm sorry, a ball and two strikes.
Cubs are trailing Atlanta. One nothing in the last of the sixth inning, but Grace is at first with nobody out. He got him. We'll use an example of the clock and what Greg Maddox has tried to do with his curveball. He said when he came over, he was very concerned getting the curveball to go from the 12th to the 6th on the clock, which is up and down as you look at the strike three. So a curveball at 12 and 6 goes almost straight down. Maddox said he was getting in trouble with that, and he said pitching coach Leo Mazzoni is trying to get him to go 2 to 8 on the curveball, which means that it's a little more of a sweeping curveball. It's a bigger break. And he's able to throw it more for strikes and be more deceptive. So that curveball flattening out some, but a little big break for Greg Maddox this year under the tutelage of Leo Mazzoni. Here's Sammy Sosa, and he takes Hine away for a ball. Sammy doubled down the left field line in the second inning. He walked against Maddox in the fourth. about it and held off on the appeal to first nothing doing says Bob Davidson so now two and oh this is where Maddox usually throws a straight change he throws anything but his 89 mile an hour fastball in a fastball hitting situation Sosa popped it up this could be a tough play Lemke justice and Lemke will take it Tommy, that changeup was 79 miles an hour, and mm. that's the veteran, Greg Maddox. Knowing that Sosa's looking only for a fastball, and knowing that he usually is a very aggressive hitter, he made the hitter's aggressiveness work against him. He took 10 miles an hour off the pitch, had the same motion as he has on a fastball. He had Sammy well out front of it, and really, he could get nothing in the swing. The New York Mets, led by Doc Gooden, Blanking Colorado in that franchise's first ever game at Shea Stadium. one nothing. but David Need clearly pitching well for Don Baylor's team. Meanwhile, the Florida Marlins jumped out to a 4 nothing lead over the Dodgers down at Joe Robbie Stadium. But as you can see there in the top part of your screen, the Dodgers have come back with three and trail by one. Cincinnati behind Jose Rijo matched up against Dennis Martinez, a 2 nothing lead in the National League's traditional opener. There's some people that think that Jose Rio is going to be right in the thick of the race for the Cy Young Award if he can stay healthy. There's a strike, and I'm one of them. I know Maddox had a great season last year, but I think over the last four years, when healthy, Rio's been the best in the league. Grace drew a leadoff walk. They tried a hit and run on the first pitch with Maldonado. He fouled it off. Grace has not been in motion since. Ooh. Close pitch. One and one to Bouchelle. How healthy is he, you think, Stoney? Steve Bouchelle. I think he's very healthy, judging by some of the cuts we saw him take in spring training. Now, I'm not sure how it's going to hold up, but right now I think it's just about as healthy as it's going to be, and it's not that warm, guys. I was getting ready to say I don't know how healthy those guys are. Another check swing, another appeal, and this time Davidson says Bouchelle went around. So the Cubs trailing the Braves, 1-0 here in the bottom of the sixth. Brace at first, two men out, and Bouchelle a one and two count. Maddox, 35 starts a year ago, tied for the best in the league. He completed nine games and had a minuscule 218 ERA. There goes the runner. And a bouncer to Pendleton. This will end the inning. 
And the Cubs get a leadoff walk, but can't do anything with it. One man left. Terry back into seventh and a six. Atlanta won. The Cubs nothing. In order to recognize outstanding high school students, Channel 9, Walgreens, and Lewis University present the Extra Effort Award. This week we salute Christopher Richard of Rich South High School. Christopher has participated in several school productions. He is also manager of a local restaurant. And as president of the Key Club, Christopher volunteers at the local Humane Society. This Extra Effort Award was brought to you by Walgreens and Lewis University, for kids' sake. For as long as there have been neighbors, there have been neighborhoods. And with them came a tradition of people relying on one another. And along with the post office and the grocer, many have come to rely on their neighborhood 76 station for quality gasoline. The same quality the winning drivers in NASCAR depend on us to provide. And how could we do anything less for our neighbors? 76, go with the spirit. isn't everything, it's the only thing. Tom will tell you, yeah. but only on Chicago's very own. That's right. Hello again, everybody. Harry Carey with Steve Stone and Tom Brenneman as we go into the top of the seventh. One to nothing, Atlanta. Boy, you figured this would be this kind of ball game. Great pitching. Here's a high pop ball out of play. Damon Berryhill, the hitter. Nothing out of two. Each team with four hits. The game easily could be nothing, nothing. Atlanta got a run with, after two were out in the first on a scratch hit. The pitch. A little bit inside. The, the hit that drove in the run wasn't a scratch. The hit that started the one-run rally was. Now the pitch, here it is, a little bit low and inside. With two out, Gann hit a ground ball. Ray Sanchez made a fine play on the grass to his right, but his, the rear foot on which he braced himself to throw slipped. He didn't quite get the ball over the first base in time, and Gann, who could run, was just barely safe. Then Pendleton walked, and Dave Justice single the left center for the only run of the ball game. Now the pitch swung on, pop foul. The wind will carry that ball well into the stands, and the count is two and two. Florida going for a victory in his first game ever in Miami. Leads the Dodgers 4-3 in the bottom of the sixth. The pitch. Line foul into the stand. My good friend, well-known attorney Jack Barry on hand here today. Jack Leahy and Ben Stein sitting behind the Atlanta dugout. Two balls, two strikes, strong, and he struck him out. That's a fifth strikeout for Morgan. This is a high fastball at 86 miles an hour, and so nothing off the fastball of Morgan. In fact, that was one of the better fastballs he's thrown today. He gets it high, tailing away from Barry Hill, and just throws it by him. One on, nobody on is Mark Lemke. High fly ball, well hit. The wind carrying the ball, but Willie Wilson makes the catch. I don't know where that ball would have gone had the wind not been blowing in. It's still an almost a 368 foot mark in left center before Willie Wilson grabbed it. 
Mark Lemke, who did not hit a home run all the spring training, almost takes one out at the 368 mark. Lemke, not known for his power, hit the six home runs all of last year, but he hit the hardest ball of the day. Well, the fans are booing. Greg Maddox and all Maddox is doing is shutting out the Cubs. I wish they'd cheer him, maybe it's change the luck around. The pitch. Nine drive base hit. I'm glad that didn't come with the bases loaded when he struck out the ending in the inning in the fourth. I hate to see pitchers start other pitchers, especially those who can hit with a first ball fastball because more times than not, that's what they hit best. And that's exactly what Morgan did, Morgan, Morgan did right there. A high fastball and Maddox just turns on it and hits a rope into left field. So here's Aldis Nixon with two away. Time for the seventh. One nothing Atlanta. Let's pause here for identification. This is WGN-TV Chicago, America's number one sports station. One ball, no strikes. Maddox, the runner at first, throw over there. Looks like Bob Scanlon loosening up in the bullpen. <laughs> oh, boy. That's a bouncing ball, easy out. One, two, three. One hit, no run, no error, one left. We go into the bottom of the seventh. The Cubs need one to tie, two to lead. One to nothing, Atlanta. Now it's dinner for our favorite food critic. Everything was wonderful. Something else to drink, monsieur. Yes, make it a Bud Light, please. I'm sorry, monsieur, we have run out. Really? Well, that does change things a bit, doesn't it? If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Billy's Chili, quaint atmosphere. Is that a tip if you just lose some change? Charming service. cities and ten countries across the Pacific, they're playing our song. United Airlines. Come fly the airline that's uniting the world. Come fly the friendly skies. It's an air show spectacular when Michael and Dominique take to the sky. Friday at 6.30 on Channel 9. Welcome. Hits a ground ball, Lemke easily throws them out. One gone. Boy, oh boy, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Outs have been on ground ball. There's only been one, one outfield ball hit by the Cubs. That's Morgan, the pitcher, who flied out to justice in the fifth. Everybody else has hit the ball on the infield with the exception of the four base hits. Viscaino. 
He's 0 for 2. Wilkins 0 for 3. Everybody hitting the ball on the ground. That's how effective Greg Maddox has been. He's pitched remarkably well. I would think that Morgan will leave for a pinch hitter. Willie Wilson in the on-deck circle with Morgan due up next. So we'll see what's on the mind of Jim LaFever. Three balls, no strike. There's a strike call. John McSherry to play the bar. Three balls and a strike. Take this pitch. You can need a base runner. The pitch. Nah. Would have been ball Holy four. Holy cow. What the heck? What's going on? Here you're losing one to nothing. Where's this guy going to hit the ball anyway? Look at that. Ball four. The pitch. Look at that swing. Three and two. Boy, I'd have him taking every every count until he got two strikes. Dwight Smith is going to hit four. Mike Morgan. Three balls, two strikes. He swung at another bad ball. Easy out. Boy, I just hope we can hold our own until Sandberg gets back in the in the lineup because you really miss him. Defensively, offensively, base running. Here's Dwight Smith. Let's see that last pitch, Arnie, if we can. Last Look. pitch was a high inside cut fastball, Harry. It came out over the plate and broke in on the hands of Viscano, but it was up and out of the strike zone. As was the watch, second strike. Watch it. Three and two. Now watch where the pitch is. How and oh, oh, he had a back out to swing out of. Here's the pitch. Swings and he fouls it off. Well, you couldn't expect a better performance from Mike Morgan. He held him to five hits. One painted run in seven innings. But you can't win if you don't score. 0-2 on Dwight Smith. Willie Wilson will be up next. Two out. Low and away. Maddox has been outstanding. One ball, two strikes. Inside, ball two. And equally as outstanding has been Mike Morgan. Two balls, two strikes. Ball three. Maddox is fan three. Foul to pitch off. He hobbles around. Maybe he's hurt. Oh boy. Olympic. Whoa, he's hurting. Another cut fastball by Greg Maddox. And anytime you cut the fastball, it moves into the left hand hitter. When you get over the top of it, like Smitty did, you foul it right off your instep or the shin. And on a real cold day, that's smart. Dwight Smith. Jim the Fever's out there now. John Fierro. Two out. Nobody on. Second game of the series tomorrow afternoon. Leadoff man at 1 o'clock Chicago time. Game time 120. John Smoltz will pitch against Jose Guzman. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Chicago National League Ball Club, which has the right of approval of the announcers and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or the use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Chicago National League Ball Club is prohibited. The pitch. Ground ball. Lemke has it over the first. 
to retire the side. One, two, three. At the end of seven, Atlanta's still leading one to nothing. Charles Bronson, top gun in the Secret Service. When somebody puts out a contract on the president's wife, a million dollars is a lot of money for near misses. Charles Bronson is the first lady's last resort. Somebody just tried to kill you. Jill Ireland, Charles Bronson. Has it ever occurred to you the president might be the one who wants you dead? Assassination. Wednesday night at 7 on Channel 9. 1976, George Cisneros had a stroke. 1990, Stanley Monroe had a stroke. 1982, George Vavilis had a stroke. But stroke didn't mark the end of their lives or their lifestyle. Find out the warning signs of stroke from the American Heart Association. Because the sooner your symptoms are recognized and treated, the faster you'll get back into the swing of things. Good question. I think young people today finally realize that these are the serious 90s. Kids today have come to accept uh, that this is a time for introspection, moderation. You can just witness the new emphasis on discipline everywhere you look. That, uh, that, that's the way it is. Isn't it? I'm not making this up. Listen, a lot of research went into this. Here's highlights from the player all-star game. Hotliner up the middle. It's off the wall. McCray scoops it up and wings it to Pendleton. Here's the play at the plate. He's safe. Unbelievable. Clear. A game in every pass. How come you never give me a pass to see a free movie? I give you a pass to come to the ballpark. I <laughs> 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 good. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Oh, get out then I can, hey, get out of here. I love you. I love you. Get out of here. <laughs> now I can't water down your drinks. <laughs> uh, you'll find a way. Well, I tell you, I think when we first uh, we first put Bill Murray on, he was just an outstanding comedian. Now he's one of the biggest money grocers in the movies. As a big movie producer and director and star, and now... Uh, <laughs> Now, I, I guess I will have to water down his drinks. Here's Blouser and Scanlon. Oh, that's a good thing about Jim Lefevre. You know, Scanlon was a disaster. The last the game in Las Vegas, a game-tying three-run homer, and then a game-winning uh, single homer. The three-run homer by Pasquale tied the game, and then uh, uh, Tim Raines won it. But he comes right back with Scanlon in the first game of the season. Ground ball right back at him. Blouser's an easy out. And Bob Scanlon rifled the ball to Mark Grace. And Mark Grace kind of surprised that the ball got there that quickly. When Scanlon lollipops the ball over, he has problems. And now he's talking with talking with Mark Grace. Says, be ready when I get it. <laughs> because he went over there about 88 miles an hour, which is his first fastball today. Yeah, Grace, I think, said, hey, why don't you throw the ball that hard to Pasqua? We'd have beaten the White Sox in Vegas. Here's the pitch low. One out. Looking ahead to the eighth. The top of the batting order. The Cubs only need two to take the lead. They trail one to nothing. Ron Gant, who with two out in the first, beat out an infield hit. Went to second when Pendleton walked and scored when Justice singled the left center. That's how they scored there. The only run of the day. Side call. That one at 90 miles an hour. So Bob Scanlon is getting it up there in a hurry. He's throwing harder than Greg Maddox. And Scanlon did have a very good spring, except for that last game against the White Sox, but that doesn't count. Now the pitch. Ah, oh, come on! Over the outside corner. And that's two away, and that will bring up Terry Pendleton. Good location for this one. John McSherry rings him up. That one had a good portion of the plate. And not much of a complaint from Ronnie yet. He was just fooled by the location. Paul Ossenmacher loosening up in the pen in case Bob Scanlon has some problems with Justice coming up, followed by Bream. 
Now ready. Two out. The pitch. Fastball is high. Pendleton, 32-year-old infielder. Probably the outstanding star of the ball club. The pitch. A little outside, ball two. Pendleton walked in the first, which really enabled Justice to drive in the only run of the ball game. Fouled it out of play. They haven't announced the crowd yet. 36,000 plus. Three eight two one eight. Thirty eight thousand two hundred and eighteen. That evens the count two balls, two strikes. Boy, they'll be dancing in the streets of Miami if, if the Marlins hold their lead over the Dodgers and win the first major league game ever played by a Miami team. Three balls, two strikes. Colorado and New York is trailing two to nothing at the end of five. Three two pitch. There's a drive left field twisting into foul territory. And that wind helped that ball twist foul. So he hit a pretty good. Texas is leading Baltimore seven to four in the ninth. Pendleton gets a base on ball. So Scanlon. I think it's going to be it for Bob Scanlon. You've got the two left-handers coming up, and Jim Lefevre knows that he cannot allow the Braves as much as one more run. So I think he's going to Ossenmacher, and the day is done for Bob Scanlon. Morgan allowed five hits, one run, and seven innings. Walk three, fan five. We'll be back with more following this message. Stand by for an exclusive video offer from WGN Sports. Top athletes have three things in common. Strength, speed, explosiveness. The Chicago Bulls work on these areas with strength and conditioning coach Al Vermeil. Now, you can too. Hi, I'm Al Vermeil. My training techniques have worked for the world champion Chicago Bulls and the Super Bowl champion San Francisco 49ers. And now they can work for the athletes in your family. My new video can help improve performance in three critical areas. Strength, speed, explosiveness. This is what it takes to be a winner, right here. Al Vermeil's success through training video and workbook is only $29.95 plus $4.50 postage and handling. Have your Visa or MasterCard ready when you call 1-800-358-2500 or send certified checker money order to the address on your screen. For success through training, call 1-800-358-2500 now. Before your competition does. Well, Paul... Asenmacher, who won four lost four last year, appeared in 70 ball games, saving eight of them, comes in the pitch to David Justice. Paul Asenmacher is going to be used as setup man this year, and that's where he's best served. Also last year, as you look at those spring numbers, which are very impressive, Asenmacher had a bad knee a great portion of last year, and it really hurt him, especially on the curveball. This spring, he didn't have any problems with right or left-hand hitters, and his manager, Jim Lefevre, needs him to get the one left-hand hitter out, but a tough one in Dave Justice. All right. The Cubs, trailing one to nothing, have uh, Willie Wilson, Ray Sanchez, and Mark Grace coming up in the bottom of the eighth. They're sure to go as far as Candy Maldonado, Sammy Sosa, and Steve Bouchel. The first final score of the afternoon of the new season, Yankees beat Cleveland 9-1. Key the winner, Nagy the loser. I, I look for the Yankees to be one of the big surprise of the American League this year. Here's Justice. There's a fly ball, broken bat, should be caught, it is. 
by Candy Maldonado. Did you see the broken piece of bat flying out? There it is. The umpire's picking it up. So Asamaka needed only one pitch. No runs, no hits, no errors, one left. We go to the bottom of the eighth. The Cubs need one to tie and two to lead. There was one thing about Bud that we kept hearing over and over. Now that's fresh beer. Huh? Okay, let's say this is the original Budweiser Brewery in St. Louis. There's another one in Texas. And two more in Florida. New York, California, New Jersey, over a dozen of them. So Budweiser doesn't have to truck their beer clean across the country. So you know it's fresh. All right. Uh, is that my beer in New Jersey? Can't believe he broke it at the company picnic. Incredible. Our employee health plan covered him, right? Not deductibles or co-payments. So he has to lay on his own money. Gaps in your health plan can be costly. Aflac can help. Aflac is a leader in supplemental insurance with 35 years of dependable service. Today, employees of over 80,000 companies count on Aflac for the peace of mind to get on with life. Any ideas? Yeah. Aflac. Aflac. Insuring over 35 million people worldwide. Hi. You think I'm slowing down just because I'm 44? Yeah, I still feel great. You know, as you get older, regular exercise is more important than ever. You might want to try biking, swimming, or just a brisk walk. Check with your doctor first, then do it. <laughs> I hope I feel this good when I'm 84. <laughs> what? I am 84? Oh. <laughs> If you like baseball cards, you'll love Card Baseball, the new baseball board game that brings your cards to life. You'll use the stats from your favorite cards. It's fun, easy to play, and perfect for anyone eight years and up. Available at participating Osco stores. Harry Carey back in the ballpark. Cabelliard playing short now. Raphael Belliard for the uh, Braves. Two balls, no strikes. Let me tell you how commanding Greg Maddox has been. 21 put outs in seven innings. Three in innings. 16 have been ground balls. One was a pop-up to the infield. Only one ball was hit out of the infield to the right fielder. That's the second fly ball. And he's fanned three men. 16. Three strikeouts is 19. Two pop flies is 21. That's how great a a pitcher he's been today. Steve Bedrosian and Mike Stanton throwing in the bullpen. Bedrosian, the right-hander on the left. Stanton, the left-hander on the right. Boy, he's trying to check his swing. There's Randy Myers, the Cubs' new closer. A pain from San Diego. Warming up in case. The Cubs would love to get two runs here. Two balls, two strikes. Fouled and out of play. Steve Bedrosian is really a great story for the Braves. He came to spring training after not playing all of last season, just asked his way on to spring training as an on-roster player and fought his way onto the club. Two balls, two strikes. High pop foul. Out of play into the stand. Willie Wilson, first major league home run was inside the ballpark against uh, Steve Trout of the White Sox in 79. He doesn't hit many home runs. Two balls, two strikes. Popped up on the infield. The catcher, Barry Hill, is there in front of home plate. Oh, oh boy, just can't do a thing with him. That's only the third ball hit in the air. The second baseman caught a pop fly in the sixth. The catcher has caught a pop fly here in the eighth. And Morgan flied out to Justice in the fifth. Here's Sanchez, one out. A little bit low and outside. 
baseball, you rarely have seen a game where a pitcher has been such a dominant figure as Greg Maddox has been today. Line drive, easy out. One hopper. Lemke over to first, two away. One to nothing of Lanta. Two out here in the bottom of the eighth. Here we are through eight innings. And Maddox has only allowed the leadoff hitter to reach, reach base one time, and that's coming a leadoff walk to Grace in the sixth. An easy roll to Grace. Hasn't had a good swing at him. One, two, three, nothing across. At the end of eight, it's still one to nothing Atlanta. A participating advertiser in Cubs baseball is United. Chicago's hometown airline is proud to be the official airline of the Chicago Cubs. Are they high? Yeah. Maybe lows. Heavy rains. Lake effect snow. Tom will tell you. Weather made me what I am today. A weatherman. Should you chill? Are you hot? We're a bundle. Not a lot. Yeah. Tom will tell you. A lot of people talk about Chicago's weather, but I do something about it. Will it blow? Aaron five. Wanna know? <laughs> Turn to nine. Tom will tell you. Yeah. But only on Chicago's very own. That's right. You want to make more money? Sure you do. But instead of just dreaming about a bigger paycheck, why not make it come true by training at home for a better career? Call this free number to find out how easy it is to do. At ICS, more than 10 million men and women have prepared for new careers without setting foot inside a classroom, and you can too. You can get your diploma or degree through ICS. Choose from any one of these courses. High school, TV, VCR repair, computer programming, electrician, animal care specialist, auto mechanics, bookkeeping, legal assistant, interior decorating, drafting, hotel restaurant management, learning the personal computer, electronics, or get your degree. You can major in business management or accounting. Make this important call right now. Call now for the free information William Shatner spoke about. Then decide if you want to train at home for a better career to make more money. Call 1-800-338-3100. There's absolutely no obligation. That's 1-800-338-3100 for free career information. Call now. It's an air show spectacular. When Michael and Dominique take to the sky. Friday at 6.30 on Channel 9. Harry Carey and Steve Stone as we go into the top of the ninth. Brian Hunter is going to pinch hit for Sid Bream. Now, that's kind of surprising in a one to nothing game. I think Bream is considered the better defensive first baseman. But manager Bobby Cox going for, hopefully, in his case, an extra run or so. Hunter hits the ground ball on the first pitch. Sanchez over to first, one out. Hunter, one out before I can tell you much about him. He's a right-handed hitter in a first base platoon. He had 239 last year with 14 homers. 14 one home runs coming in just 238 at bats. So penciled out over a full year. That's a 35 home run clip. One out, nobody on. Here is. Damon Berryhill. Nothing out of three for the day. Boy, that's... I think in the case of the Braves, you could say... The pitching is not 70%, not 75%, not 80%, not 85%, about 93% of their skill is contained in their pitching staff. One ball, two strikes. And that doesn't make you a bad ball club. <laughs> because you win with your pitching. The idea is to win. That W is so much more important than the L. One ball, two strikes, one out. Can the Cubs muster a rally in the ninth? It'll be Candy Maldonado, Sammy Sosa, and Steve Bushell coming up. There's a drive, well hit, going to be caught by Maldonado. Barry Hill hit that ball pretty hard. Two away. 
You know, the Braves have had one hit over the last five innings. But they scored the one run in the first after two were out. On Ganson Field hit, Pendleton's walk, and David Justice single to left center. Mark Lemke 0 for 2. Switch hitter. Two balls and the strike. Well, Texas beat Rick Sutcliffe in Baltimore, 7-4. Three balls and a strike two out. The Yankees defeated Cleveland, 9-1. The big story is going to be in Miami. Ball for Lemke Walk. And here is Greg Maddox who has pitched an outstanding ball game. He's had one hit, one out of three. Well, I don't care. It doesn't seem right that this young man should be booed. Two out, a runner on at first base. The pitch. A little low. But people pays their money and they're entitled to do whatever they feel like within reason. One ball, one strike. Austin Knocker. He's ahead now, one ball, two strikes. Miami, the Florida Marlins are leading six to three going into the eighth to Miami today. Leffert's the winner. There's Maddie striking out. Wilkins has to throw to first to retire the side. Well, this is it. We go in the bottom of the ninth with the score, Atlanta 1, Cubs nothing. Charles Bronson, top gun in the Secret Service. When somebody puts out a contract on the president's wife... A million dollars is a lot of money for near misses. Charles Bronson is the first lady's last resort. Somebody just tried to kill you. Jill Ireland, Charles Bronson. Has it ever occurred to you the president might be the one who wants you dead? Assassination. Wednesday night at 7 on Channel 9. In some cultures, proving you're a man is difficult. In America, it's easy. Just go to a post office and register with Selective Service when you turn 18. It's quick, it's easy, and it's the law. It was always a great magazine, but it was sometimes a safe magazine. TV Guide's not safe anymore. We take risks. We go off and we ask people the tough questions. We get behind the scenes. Nobody else can do that because they don't have the contacts and they're not inside the industry like we are. Call and subscribe to the new TV Guide now and get four issues free. TV Guide is the authority on television. We are better than every newspaper in America because we are complete, we are accurate, we are credible. Order now. You'll receive 41 issues billed in four payments of $8.89 each. And you'll receive four more issues free with your paid subscription. That's a total of 45 issues. People love nuggets, little bits and pieces, and gossip items. The difference with the gossip in TV Guide is that you can believe it. So order today and get four issues free. Just call 1-800-232-3300. If it's on TV, it'll be in TV Guide. Michael and Dominique take to the sky. Friday at 6.30 on Channel 9. Harry Carey back to Wrigley Field. It's do or die. One to nothing Atlanta. Bottom of the nine. The pitch. A little bit of high. Ball one. An outstanding performance by both starting pitchers. Morgan for the Cubs. 
Maddox for the grade. Did he go around? Yep. He tried to check. Cincinnati beat Montreal two to one today. Many teams, many people picking Cincinnati in the West, including me. Montreal being picked by most people in the East. Ball two. Fastball of Maddox down about three miles an hour, so it could be that he is feeling a little fatigued, but he still has a lot of movement on that fastball. Two balls and a strike. That evens the count, two and two. What an outstanding pitcher. 18 of his outs have been infield rolling. Three of them strike out. Two outs on infield pop-ups. Only one ball hit out of the infield. Caught by the right fielder. Hit by the pitcher, by Mike Morgan, in the fifth. So he has held the eight regulars, plus the pinch hitter, he has kept them from hitting the ball out of the infield at all. Candy Maldonado coming out with a new war club. Two balls, two strikes. Oh, for a hit or a walk right here. One to nothing, Braves. Foul back had a good cut. That was a good pitch to hit, and unfortunately, Maldonado just got under it. It was a fastball, not much on it, and right down the middle. And that might be his one shot at Maddox. Two balls, two strikes. Ball three. Three and two. There's the line of Greg Maddox, as you can see. Two walks, one of them to lead off an inning. He hasn't been a strikeout pitcher today, but he has been in control. Three and two. Struck him out. Strikeout number four. That was a good changeup by Maddox, and although it was out of the strike zone, it looked like a knee-high fastball when it left Maddox's hand. And that's the maturation of a great pitcher. He didn't have that pitch a few years back. He's got it now, and that's why he wins big. So, only one man still hit the ball out of the infield. That's Maddox's fourth strikeout. Here's Sammy Sosa, who doubled the left in the second. Walked in the fourth, popped out in the sixth. He didn't mean to swing. Tried to check, foul the pitch off. What an outstanding performance. Hit the outside corner for a strike. He is fan four. Of the 25 outs so far executed in the game, 24 have either been ground balls or strikeouts or infield pop fly. There's a drive in the left field, and my drive and does a base hit. Sammy Sosa holds it first. Billy Taking the throw from the left fielder, Ron Gant. There's where the speed of Gant makes a difference. That's what we need. That's the, that's the preacher in the bleachers holding that sign up. Good piece of hitting by Sammy Sosa. He got that inside fastball right on his hands, but as you can see, he brought the hands in and got the head of the bat on the ball. He didn't get jammed on this one. He's able to drop it down the line for his second hit of the day. Two for three against Maddox, and that is quite a day against the dominant pitcher. Here's Bushell. Good speed at first base in Sosa. Low and outside. One ball, no strike. The preacher in the bleachers was holding that one to tie and two to win.
That guy's name is Pritikin, as I remember. One ball, no strike. Strike over the outside corner. Bouchel. One out. Bobby Cox, the Atlanta manager. Runner back. Same two teams tomorrow and again Wednesday. Same time, 1.20. Leadoff end each day, 1 o'clock. Then the Cubs tip their head from Philadelphia. One ball, one strike. There goes the runner. There's the third save. He's got the tying run in scoring position. Sosa stole second. And Barry Hill did not make a good throw. Well, that's what the Cubs had going for him all day. The fact that Barry Hill does not have a particularly good arm, and he gets a good ball to throw, but gets absolutely nothing on it. And Sammy Sosa with a great jump easily in at second base. Lemke did a very good job of stopping this ball from going into center field. And that's the tying run in the person of Sammy Sosa. A great jump by Sosa. And it would have been difficult to get him even with a good throw. All right, now a base hit would tie it up. Sammy has the lead at second. Two balls and the strikes pick off play. Runner back. Boy, it seemed like that throw was right on the coconut. Right on top of the helmet. Excellent throw by Maddox and Lemke right there. The tag and the ball very <laughs> close on Sammy Sosa. Bill Hahn in the call. Now the pitch. Oh. He now has an even up count. Two and two. Don't think about a home run. Think base hit. Steve Bouchelle, pretty good man in this situation. Two balls, two strikes. An exciting finish. The pitch. Ball three almost hit him. Three balls, two strikes. Or make it be a good pitch. Maddox has made him swing at some bad pitches. There you have a look at each dugout. Big play, three and two. He whirls, no play. And now Barry Hill goes out. Boy, Sammy Sosa would love to steal third. Then even a fly ball would tie up the ball game. And they got to be concerned about that, the Braves. There's Tom Glavin. Three balls, two strikes. Ball four. The tying and winning runs are on. And here comes Rick Wilson. And here comes Bobby Cox, and I got to believe that's going to be it for Greg Maddox. He's going to go to Mike Stanton, who's the closest thing the Braves have to a stopper. And that could mean that Wilkins will be called back, but the day is done for Maddox, and the fans letting him hear it. But what a job by Maddox today. Listen to the crowd, first of all. And we'll be back now in a moment. For as long as there have been neighbors, there have been neighborhoods. And with them came a tradition of people relying on one another. And along with the post office and the grocer, Many have come to rely on their neighborhood 76 station for quality gasoline. The same quality the winning drivers in NASCAR depend on us to provide. And how could we do anything less for our neighbors? 
76. Go with the spirit. Mike Stanton will be the new pitcher. So, Greg Maddox pitched outstanding, outstandingly well, as in Mike Morgan. The only difference is Maddox can, can still be the winner. Maddox won eight and a third inning. Morgan pitched seven complete innings. Now Stanton, last year, won five, lost four, and saved eight. He throws the ball hard. His I'd love to see a wild pitch first. Well, his ERA was high last year at 4.10, which is a high earned run average out of the bullpen, and he's got to face Tommy Shields. Tom Shields making his National League debut. Shields had a great spring, but there's nothing in the spring that prepares you for this. A great situation for Shields to be welcomed to his brand new ball club after six years in the minor leagues with the Baltimore Orioles. So the outfield plays him straight away, and he'll have to tune it up because Stanton has a 90-mile-an-hour fastball. Runners of first and second. One out. Tom Shields. Ground ball might be a double play. Out at second base, no play at first. He nervously swung at the very first pitch and bounced into a force out from Belliard to Lemke. Good play by Mark Lemke, scooping out a low throw from Raphael Belliard, and that really stopped the rhythm of the double play. So the Cubs do have another life. And the throw right here is an excellent pickup by Lemke. Otherwise, this ball could easily have gone into right field. And now another meeting at the mound. And it's all up to Jose Vizcaino, the tying run at third, the winning run at first. Shield on the first pitch, grounded sharply to Belliard, who made a bad throw, but Lemke handled it. And the ball game now is about to come to a conclusion, one way or another. Whoa, almost threw the ball away. One ball, no strikes. This Caino is nothing out of three. The Cubs have still only hit one ball handled by the outfield, one put out. That evens the count one and one. I don't know, with three and one, the guy swings at a bad ball. With one ball and nothing, he takes it right down the middle. One ball, one strike. Well, the ball game's over. Fly ball, and the Atlanta Braves have defeated the Chicago Cubs. Tom Stanton gets his first save of the year. The Braves get their first victory of the year. Greg Maddox proves that when you're a great pitcher, you can win with a weak club as he did with the Cubs, and you can win with a good ball club as he just did for the pennant-winning Braves the last two years. And so, a long and an exciting opening day of the season, but unfortunately, the Cubs lose it one to nothing. And Morgan pitched almost as well as, as the Dynamics, but Morgan had the misfortune, a shame to have a, a game decided by a run the way it was scored, Steve, today. Well, this was an excellently played ball game, and the only thing that separated these two teams, Harry, was a slip at shortstop by Ray Sanchez. That's what he I was mean. able to plant the back foot. You don't have a run, and we're going into extra innings, but that's the breaks of the game. The Cub offense not equal to the task against a very tough Greg Maddox, and Mike Stanton, who was not going to be confused with Dennis Eckersley, came in, did a very good job in the ninth inning, and so the Braves, who are maybe suspect in the bullpen, came up with a good bullpen effort today. I, I just want to add one other thing. I, I was so I was so unhappy to hear the booing of Matt. This is a young guy who's been a great pitcher for the Chicago Cubs. What happened? He did what other ball players do. He went where the money was most. 
Uh, that's apparently what he did. We don't know what went on, but uh, I hate to see a young, fine athlete, a great pitcher for Chicago for some years is about the only thing we have going for us the last couple of years. They, they be, be, be booed by, by fans who so, were so thrilled through his performance here for Chicago in the past. We'll be back now in a moment. The in-your-face fadeaway. Arc times velocity equals a three-point shot. Translation, Electric Avenue. Beats the short off for Best Buy. Scotty, just look at the Electric Avenue all-star lineup. Sony, Panasonic, RCA, Apple, Maytag, GE. Plus, Electric Avenue will match any store's advertised price guaranteed. Teeny little guys, weren't they? What would you do if you won $4 million in Lotto? Go to a fat farm out in California, get real healthy, come back to Springfield and throw a big party. I'd open up a nice countryside bed and breakfast. What if you won $6 million? I'd have to build a bigger house. Sure. Sure, all my kids would come back home. I'm skydiving right into the Cayman. In your dreams, whatever they be, I'd see it all. Dream a little dream with me. Will you look at this? The Chicago Tribune's giving away a home. The Chicago Tribune is giving away a $200,000 furnished home in the Chicago Tribune Great Home Giveaway. Just fill out the coupon you'll find every day in the Tribune and mail it in. Choose from a wide variety of styles and floor plans from 16 fine builders. You can also win exciting weekly prizes. Enter every day. The more you enter, the more chances to win. The Chicago Tribune Great Home Giveaway. Pick up a Tribune and enter daily. Hey, Winter Scott here at True Value with my friend Pat Summerall. And we're asking shoppers what they like best about True Value. Is it personal service or low prices? You can always count a good buy when you come in True Value. Personal service here. It's quick and easy access. You're not tied up all day just to do a quick shopping. For personal service and low prices, bring your family to ours. The True Value family of stores. Would you shop here the rest of your life? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Got my Cubs tickets. Tell them to call 312831 Cubs and order tickets today. Yeah, 312831 Cubs. It's the first sign of spring. <laughs> Do you have your tickets yet? Call 312831 Cubs. And here's a big summary of an exciting ball game today. Atlanta, one run, five hits, one error. The Cubs, no runs, five hits, no errors. The winning pitcher, Greg Maddox. The losing pitcher, Mike Morgan. The save goes to Mike Stanton. Now, here's the Budweiser play. It happened in the first inning. Two men were out. A line shot in the left center field off the bat of David Justice and the only run scored easily and that was the Budweiser play of the day all right a wonderful day a big crowd everybody enjoyed themselves some people got a lot of uh, dislike out of the system by booing a young man who's been a great pitcher he proved he's just as great with the Atlanta Braves and he's going to be better because they're a better ball club than the team he pitched for here the last couple of years. How you can boo a guy like this, I cannot understand. But I, it's not mine to reason why, merely to do or die. So that's it. Harry Carey from Wrigley Field where the Braves have beaten the Cubs in a thriller one to nothing. So long, everybody. The producer-director of Cubs baseball is Arnie Harris. The coordinating producer is Bill Borson. Our associate producer is Joe Corneo.
Our next telecast on Channel 9 will be between the Braves and the Cubs tomorrow afternoon. Our telecast beginning with the leadoff man at 1 o'clock. Final score again, the Braves won, the Cubs nothing. So long, everybody. Chicago Cubs baseball on Channel 9. The Cubs are brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers with that fresh, pure, natural taste. Nothing beats a Bud. True Value Hardware Stores. Got a tough job to do? You can do it with True Value Hardware Stores. Buick and your local Buick dealers. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. Lab, insuring over 35 million people worldwide. And by your local 76 dealers who invite you to go with the spirit, the spirit of 76. Not many things are more Chicago than United, but there are a few. United Airlines, proud to be Chicago's hometown airline. Come fly the airline that's uniting the world. Come fly the friendly skies. When a car is stolen, it doesn't take much time. It doesn't take much effort. But what it does take... Car 17, multiple 1050, what fatality is possible stolen vehicle involved? It's something you can't get back. Stolen cars put innocent lives in danger. Don't make auto theft easy. Remember, you hold the key. Charles Bronson, top gun in the Secret Service. When somebody puts out a contract on the president's wife... A million dollars is a lot of money for near misses. Charles Bronson is the first lady's last resort. Somebody just tried to kill you. Jill Ireland, Charles Bronson. Has it ever occurred to you the president might be the one who wants you dead? Assassination. Wednesday night at 7 on Channel 9. It was always a great magazine, but it was sometimes a safe magazine. TV Guide's not safe anymore. We take risks. We go off and we ask people the tough questions. We get behind the scenes. Nobody else can do that. Because they don't have the contacts and they're not inside the industry like we are. Call and subscribe to the new TV Guide now and get four issues free. TV Guide is the authority on television. We are better than every newspaper in America because we are complete, we are accurate, we are credible. Order now. You'll receive 41 issues billed in four payments of $8.89 each. And you'll receive four more issues free with your paid subscription. That's a total of 45 issues. People love nuggets, little bits and pieces and gossip items. The difference with the gossip in TV Guide is that you can believe it. So order today and get four issues free. Just call 1-800-232-3300. If it's on TV, it'll be in TV Guide. In the tradition of Hoosiers and Brian's song, Final Shot, The Hank Gather Story, tonight at 11.30 on Channel 9. is brought to you in part by your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer. An outstanding job by Greg Maddox. Maddox and Morgan have hooked up three times now, each game resulting in a shutout. This time, unfortunately for the Cubs, it was Maddox one to nothing over Mike Morgan and the Chicago Cubs. What a day it was. Not much offense, very good defense, and the Braves prevail. It was a very good opening day, but unfortunately for the Cubs, they couldn't get anything going against Greg Maddox. So we'll be back with a look at the only run after these messages. Are they high? Yeah. Maybe lows. Heavy rains. Lake effect snow. Tom will tell you. Weather made me what I am today. A weatherman. Should you chill? Are you hot? We're a bundle. Not a lot. Yeah. Tom will tell you. A lot of people talk about Chicago's weather, but I do something about it. Will it blow? Here in five? <laughs> Wanna know? <laughs> Turn to nine. Tom will tell you. Yeah. But only on Chicago's very own. That's right. For future generations, our country is leaving behind our knowledge, 
our technologies, our values, and 190 million tons of garbage every year. Recycling alone just can't do it. Keep America Beautiful is an organization that can do something. We have solutions that have worked in cities and towns across the country. What can you do? More than you think. Write to Keep America Beautiful for your free brochure and find out. selling minivan in this town for nine straight years at savings of up to $2,600 during the national minivan sale why even consider anything else as a consultant working on NASA projects Deborah Pennington has taken her DeVry education a long way I'm working in real-time software exploring new frontiers DeVry opened up a whole new world for me at DeVry you earn a bachelor's degree that meets today's challenges in business and technology. With DeVry, success isn't that far away. Call now, 1-800-247-7800. Day and evening classes available. DeVry, we're serious about success. What looked like a harmless first inning run held up all day long as Dave Justice drives the ball into left center field. That scored Ron Gant, put the Braves up one to nothing, and then it was up to the defense and Greg Maddox to hold the Cubs right there, and hold them they did. So stay with us. We'll be back with a final word after these messages. She lived for the sun. He wanted only the best. Together, they found everything they desired. The Chrysler convertible sale. She discovered the thrill of sun-drenched driving. He found the best, the touch of glove leather. They reveled in America's best-selling beauty. They reveled in the rebate. They reveled in the savings. 2,000 on selected models. The Chrysler Convertible Sale. Don't miss it at your Chrysler Plymouth dealers now. Perfectly clear, Everlast sports drink. Give yourself mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Charles Bronson, top gun in the Secret Service. When somebody puts out a contract on the president's wife... A million dollars is a lot of money for near misses. Charles Bronson is the first lady's last resort. Somebody just tried to kill you. Hugh Ireland, Charles Bronson. Has it ever occurred to you the president might be the one who wants you dead? Assassination. Wednesday night at 7 on Channel 9. The next telecast tomorrow with the Braves in town once again against the Cubs. Leadoff man at 1 o'clock and we'll see you then as the Cubs try to even up the series. So long everybody. Guests on the 10th inning will receive a handsome Fendi wristwatch from Henry K. Jewelers, 547 North Michigan Avenue or the third level water tower place. The 10th inning was brought to you in part by your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Time. Cubs at home against the Atlanta Braves. For Dave Campbell and Peter Gammon, I'm Chris Berman. Thanks for watching, everybody. Done so far this year. One and three, high ERA. Anthony Young, the last couple times out, has thrown the ball pretty well. You look at the innings, the hits, and there's his career against San Diego. He's never beaten this team, and he's got his work cut out for him facing Andy Bennis. Bennis's lifetime record against the Cubs is very good, but his record in this park against them is spectacular. 
Good night to pitch however it is 45 degrees it's very cool but the wind blowing at 14 miles an hour is blowing straight in over the center field scoreboard so Tom Trebelhorn tries to shake his team out of this season long malaise here at Wrigley Field which has seen him go just two and 14 at home. You know getting back to the three broadcasting greats of WGN on this the commemoration of the 80th birthday of Wrigley Field. They'll be broadcasting in spite of their many, many years, many fine years of broadcasting the WGN. This will be the, the first night game they will have done in Chicago because there were no lights here at Wrigley Field before. So I imagine it's going to seem a little strange to them. All right, here we go with Derek Bell leading off, hitting 283, five homers, 16 RBI. Derek Bell has some power but he also strikes out quite a bit. If you keep the ball away you're going to be in good shape. A little bit low on outside ball one. Montreal got two in the first Phillies came back with the one. A high pop foul. From the high scoreboard camera. There's what you will see. That's what the people on the rooftops are seeing. As it zooms in on the infield, the pitcher's mound, and this delivery. A little bit outside. Ball 